This is a 4-axis 3D printer built on the base of a Prusa Mark III, which has a fully rotatable tool head and a 45 degree tilted nozzle to print complete overhangs without the need for support structure. I drove to Switzerland to take a look at this unique machine and to understand how it works, how you slice parts for it and what its limitations are. And the best thing is that this machine and the slicer are available open source, so you can build one yourself if you like. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Easily create your own beautifully looking website and save 10% by visiting squarespace.com slash CNC kitchen. Complexity is free is a sentence that's often used for marketing 3D printers and 3D printing technologies. Even though up to a certain degree this is true, depending on the additive manufacturing technology that you're using, there's still geometrical limitations that a designer needs to take into account. Filament-based 3D printers can print very complex structures, but when it comes to overhangs, there's just a physical limit that can be achieved with conventional machines and current slicers. Unsupported overhangs will simply start drooping down at a certain point, leaving a very bad surface finish, resulting in geometrical deviation and can even cause print failures. You can use support structure, but they require printing time, can be hard to remove and simply cause waste. A couple of weeks ago, I visited the ZHAW, the Zürcher Hochschule für Angewandte Wissenschaften, a University of Applied Science in Winterthur, Switzerland, in order to take a look at one of their projects, the Rodbot. The Rodbot is a modified Prusa Mark III with a dual control board, but more importantly, a fully rotatable 45 degree tilted tool head that doesn't only look super mesmerizing when it prints, but it's also able to print completely overhanging structures without any support. I was greeted by Michael Wüttrich, who is one of the lecturers at the university and who built the Rodbot with his team. One of the reasons why I decided to take a look at the machine is not only because it shows how awesome real multi-axis printing can look and what you can achieve with it, but also because the design files for the toolhead as well as the scripts used for slicing are fully open source. So if you're interested in technology, take a look at the links in the description. When I visited their lab, which honestly made me kind of envious, I also saw that the Rodbot wasn't their first attempt at multi-axis 3D printing, because already Michael's predecessor, Professor Elspass and his team had already built a complex 6-axis delta printer called the MaxBot for similar endeavors. Yet, fortunately, the Rodbot is significantly simpler and should be adaptable to a wide range of printers. The core of the Rodbot is its rotatable print head with the 45 degree nozzle. There is an E3D Himera direct extruder on the top, which feeds the filament that's guided through a stepper motor that has a hollow shaft down to a slip ring, which enables that all of the wires don't get tangled, allowing completely free rotation of the tool head and which also acts as an additional bearing. Then there is a slightly modified V6 heatsink and the 45 degree heater blocker nozzle, which is basically the only real custom non-printable part in this build. They went with a dual control board that's easily configurable and does have the extra stepper motor drivers for the fourth movement axis. To increase clearance they also got rid of the bed leveling sensor that's now used to home the rotation axis and a simple micro switch hopes Z. Yet hardware is only one part and in my opinion the easy part in multi-axis non-planar 3D printing and I've already discussed that several times. More than 3-axis CNC's are very common in manufacturing and also multi-axis robot arms are more affordable than ever. But to my knowledge there isn't a ton of software available to create G-code for 3D printing for these machines that's also affordable for makers. This is in my opinion one of the reasons why non-planar and or multi-axis 3D printing hasn't had its breakthrough. Slicing software and slicing methods are the challenge, not the hardware. The slicing approach that Michael and his team developed is so simple yet effective that I hope to see more work on it in the future and hopefully have it in common slicing software at some point. Very generalized, with a common FDM 3D printing slicer you can print overhangs in this plus minus 45 degree window. Common belt printers, which have an angled nozzle, 
tilt that window to 0 to 90 degrees. And this is where the Rodbot improves on. With its rotational print head, it can reach all around the part and increases the window to around plus minus 90 degrees, which allows completely overhanging structures on all sides and without any supports and therefore generates cone-shaped layers. Hence the name conical slicing. Conical slicing is the method that's used to generate the G-code for the printer. Yet they didn't program a whole new slicer, but simply trick regular software into generating the paths and then modify that code with a bit of Python script. I've heard of this method in the past, yet never really understood it until Michael explained it to me and the paper that's also linked below illustrates that approach very well. We have three steps. Pre-deformation of the STL file, slicing that pre-deformed STL in a regular slicer and back transforming the G-code. But let me try to walk you through this in more detail. First, let's talk about pre-deformation. This is done so that the regular slicer can later be tricked into generating the conical G-code. For this, all of the points of the mesh are moved upwards in Z-direction, depending on their distance to the defined rotation axis. Since this can lead to serious artifacts depending on the mesh fineness of the part, the Python script can also refine the mesh to make the final result smoother. This process leads to a conically deformed part at a 45 degree angle of the nozzle of the rodbot. A cube will look like this, a 3D Benchy like this, and the sample overhanging part like this. The deformed part is then brought back into the slicer and a regular G-code is generated. I had to use Simplify 3D for the current version of the script because it seems to use some comments injected by the slicer for the back deformation, but that's something that's probably easily fixed. This G-code of the deformed part then gets back transformed, so exactly the reverse process of what we did to the SDL in the beginning. So all the G-code points are moved down again depending on their distance to the center axis. There are some edge cases that need to be considered, like longer linear moves that would cause crashes with the already printed part or flow rates that need to be slightly adjusted. If you want to get more details on this, I highly recommend taking a closer look at the paper on this method. This leaves you with beautiful non-planar G-code, where print moves are no longer on one layer, but the part is built up shell by shell. Another great thing about this method is that the layers are now staggered like cinder blocks, which might have a positive effect on part strength. What do you think? Conical slicing is quite a simple process if you understand it. And if you had enough clearance around your nozzle, you could even print this G-code on a regular 3D printer, because these are just simple non-planar print moves. I actually want to dig deeper into this conical slicing approach for regular 3-axis printers because there is a slightly modified version of the script available that lets you slice at more shallow angles and might therefore be a great method to print supportless overhangs on every printer at home without any modifications. If you don't want to miss that, then make sure to be subscribed. Yet the outstanding feature of the Rodbot is its fourth axis and the 45 degree angled nozzle. Even though you can print this conical G-code on a regular printer, you'll quickly run into extrusion problems where the nozzle starts more and more dragging over its own extruded material at that steeper angles. With the tilted nozzle of the Rodbot, you omit this issue because you can make sure that you're always perpendicular to the layer and the extruded line. This additional degree of freedom results in G-code that doesn't only reference the x, y and z coordinates, but also adds a u-value which is the angle of the fourth axis. All of this leads to beautiful non-planar print moves, where all the four axes of the printer move at the same time. The prints always start at the center of the conical axis and then slowly grow outwards and upwards. The Rodbot can print completely horizontal overhangs without any support material, which opens up quite some opportunities. Yet, as always, there are also limitations and downsides of a technology, both conical slicing and the Rodbot with its 45 degree angled nozzle. Conical slicing is no slicing approach for every arbitrary geometry. You might have already noticed that the overhangs you have seen so far were always facing outwards. Conical slicing suffers from the same problem as Cartesian and belt FDM slicing. Print lines can start in mid-air, so if you have inward-facing overhangs, you'd still need supports. 
Another way would be cutting up the part so that the inward facing section of the part is sliced with an inward cone instead of an outward cone. This is already implemented, yet it's currently still a manual process sectioning the parts and stacking the G-code on top of each other to print even more complex parts without the need for supports. And this is where we basically are today, at least with this open source approach. The Rotbot and the conical slicing methods are a great demonstration of what can be achievable with relatively simple modifications and a super smart but still simple slicing approach. However, the question remains if we will see this being implemented in commercial machines at some point in the future or if current machines are good enough for most tasks. Seeing the Rotbot in person, printing parts was a great experience and I'm sure there would be plenty of applications for it. Yet where I see the even bigger innovation is the conical slicing approach, which can up to a certain degree also be used on the conventional printer you might have at home and allow more design freedom and less wasted support structure. The process currently is still very manual with the two Python scripts for transforming the STL and back transforming the G-code. Yet, if you think about it, this was very similar when the first belt printers were developed that actually used a very similar approach for generating their tilted G-code. Yet today we have this directly implemented in branches of Cura and also Race 3 ds idea maker. Conical slicing could be the next big innovation in slicers but will require a ton more work and research to create algorithms to automatically section parts in areas for conical or just tilted slicing and others that can be printed regularly. If you're interested in this topic in general, also make sure to check out the work of René Müller on xyzdims.com where he develops such a universal slicer. But what do you think about the 4-axis rotbot and conical slicing? Do you only see it in niche applications or would you like to have one or even both available for mainstream machines? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Admittedly, this novel 3D printing technique is really mind-blowing, but I'm sure many of you also have great ideas where you want to get the word out to the world. We're all creative people, we're artists, we're makers, and we might even make our living from what we do. And in a time when we need to stand out to be recognized, it has never been more important to present these ideas and our businesses in the perfect way. And this is where longtime channel sponsor Squarespace comes in. Squarespace is the leading website creation platform that will help you and enable you to create the website you have always wanted. I've been using Squarespace for many years for my own website, simply because their tools are so easy to use and I can focus on creating value and content and don't have to worry about backups, patches or even how my website looks on all devices. With Squarespace, you can't only present your content perfectly for new visitors, but you can also monetize your content with members-only areas and at a shop to sell your designs and creations. You can easily embed additional content like files, videos or even host your podcast on Squarespace and use their powerful analytics tools to adjust your content for your visitors. So if you've always wanted a professional website or your current one is just horribly outdated, then don't hesitate and just try it out completely for free by using the link down in the description. And when you're ready to launch, you'll get an additional 10% off your website and domain purchase if you use the code CNC Kitchen at checkout. So create the website you've always wanted by browsing squarespace.com slash CNC Kitchen and get your additional 10% discount by using code CNC Kitchen at checkout. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and helping me to easily maintain my own website. Thanks for watching everyone! I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one, auf Wiedersehen and goodbye! <coughs> and the two Python scripts for transforming... For transforming?